Live Studio B sessions on WNCW made possible by Sierra Nevada Brewing Company, and we are happy to welcome Christina Vane to Studio B. You are looking real shiny and <laughs> just bright and ready to go this morning. That is a miracle, because I think I, I got this look together in my car in two minutes when I was outside, and I realized we were going to have a camera in the room. So oh, thank you. Well, thank you for well, noticing the hard work. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing in more than one respect. Let's go ahead and hear your first song for the set in here in Studio B, Christina Vane on WNCW. Thanks. Uh, this song is called Heaven Bound Station. It's off my latest record. WNCW Live in Studio B. We just keep giggling, don't we? Uh, Christina Vane. <laughs> yeah, I giggled because uh, I was like, is he going to wait for this tone to end? Because this is a resonator and it just goes on the forever. The sustain is, yeah, forever and <laughs> yeah. ever, right? I was like, you can go ahead. <laughs> well, you know, I don't want to like talk over your playing oh, there. Thank you. Uh, we're happy to have you here today. And uh, she comes armed with a very interesting looking res resonator guitar and... An interesting banjo, which we will, I'm sure, get to as we go along today. Uh, tell us a little bit about that interesting guitar you're playing. Yeah, this is a, a national resophonic guitar, and uh, so it's a resonator, you know, or some people call it a dobro, but it's got a metal body, so it's made of steel, which is great for when I drop it and hit it against things. It's also great or for, knock this, somebody for out. the sound, I guess. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, totally, actually. That's a whole other story. I did have a guitar smashed on a busking event when I lived in California, and it was a wooden guitar. And I was like, well, that's not going to happen again, because now I have a, <laughs> a metal body. Uh, but yeah, it's um, this is my baby. I... Uh, was fortunate enough to get to know the national, the dealers out in California when I worked at a guitar shop at McCabe's Guitar Shop and ended up getting this through them, um, just how I wanted it. It's a custom. It has like a blue back, which I was showing some other folks in the studio. And it's um, it's just my favorite thing, you know. It's, yeah, it's a cutaway for any nerds out there. It's a cutaway, single cone, uh, biscuit bridge. Metal oh, believe resonator. me. Believe me. We have some nerds listening in. Good. So, yeah. Well, then, uh, you thanks guys, for that. The Rezo Rocket model, if you want to know. There the you go. One. <laughs> There's there nicer you. ones on the website, but this does everything <laughs> I need it to do and more. So, I'm very happy. But it sounds with it. terrific. Thank you. Um, and you worked at McCabe's. That's, yeah. That's cool. That's yeah. a cool fact. I, I didn't know that. I love that place. Got a lot of love for McCabe's. I learned a lot of things. I picked up the banjo at McCabe's, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure the person that suggested it rude the day because for the next month I was learning claw hammer in the store on their banjos but uh it paid off because I also got this banjo at McCabe's actually a lot of great pickings been done at McCabe's so yeah uh, it's yeah. an honor to ever have been in that place so. a testament to that in our library so oh well, that's good to know yeah. 
you uh you know you people have compared you to bonnie Raitt and stuff you know just in the, in the fact that you play the slide and all that sort of thing how much of an influence was she on you you know it'd be a lie to say that she was a main influence in my music because she wasn't i mm-hmm. whenever i see that in print i die inside of happiness because it's such a high compliment sure but you know she um I didn't get hip to her or the person that really got me into the Delta Blues thing was Rory Block, another amazing guitar player. Um, and so, you know, I was late to that game. I grew up, I didn't grow up listening to Rory Block, or sorry, to Bonnie Raitt, except her her version of Angel from Montgomery. That's what found itself its way into my playlist. And I knew her from that. And now I've listened to a lot more of her stuff and mm-hmm. I think she's, She's just an idol. She's just amazing. But it is funny when I see that because I'm like, well, yeah, we both play slide. But even that, she plays it on her middle finger and I play it here. And Mm -hmm. she's more of an electric player. And she does it all. But um, yeah, I just, I don't ask any questions when I get that compliment. I'm like, I'll take it. Thank you. She's such an idol of mine. She's so cool. Sure. And one of these days somebody will go, a new player will come along. She sounds like Christina Vane. You know that'll be that'll be even better, <laughs> oh right? Oh my gosh, I hope so. Uh, yeah, that would be awesome. Uh, you uh, are you are not from the Mississippi Delta, but that area of blues, you know, that's kind of uh, spoken to you in your life, as well as I hear, you know, influence of Appalachian music as well. Oh yeah. Tell us a bit about how you come to all that, because you are you are from Italia, right? Yes, yes. Uh, I I know it, it's a wild little puzzle that get got me here but that makes it to me even more meaningful and sometimes I get really emotional about it because uh yeah I grew up on rock music on you know generic whatever was on the radio and then my parents is taste which is 80s and classic rock and um and then I moved to the United States for college at 18 and I still was no closer to either of those things you mentioned until I graduated and I had already started getting into the slide. I saw this British band when I was back home in London for the summer playing, and he was playing a lap slide. And I was really interested in the slide already and writing in it in that style, but I hadn't actually <laughs> listened to like the source stuff for, you know, Bottleneck Slide. And um, Rory Block, uh, her record, uh, tri- her tribute to Skip James is where I first heard Hard Time Killing Floor Blues done outside of Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? And I didn't even connect those dots at the time, but I had seen that movie. And I just remember vividly playing that track, you know, 10 Mm. times in a row in my car, just like, what is this? And then I found the original and that was the rabbit hole. And then the same thing happened actually with uh, In My Time of Dying, which Led Zeppelin covered, um, may even have taken songwriting credit for, which I find very interesting. Yeah. Um, But uh, it's it's a traditional and, you know, one of the first recordings is Blind Willie Johnson, 1927. And I think it's his Grafton, Wisconsin recording. So... That was the other bridge that got me there because I, I love, you know, Led Zeppelin's version. It's awesome. No hate to them at all. But yeah, when I found the source of it, I was like, oh, my God, you know, the the playing, the singing, especially Blind Willie Johnson. He's got that throwing voice where he's like a preacher. And then he's got this beautiful, quiet vibrato that he does on Dark Was the Ground, Cold Was the Night and those kind of songs. So, yeah, from there, it's been like a deep dive for me into Turn of the century blues is how it started, but that kind of, I'm sure, as music lovers, you know, it, it all just starts to feed into that time period where you start to learn about the jug bands and like the jazz that was happening. And then, you know, there's the a lot of banjo. crossover in that back, back in the day, right? People like to pretend that music is in genres, but those were invented, you know, by record companies to make it easier. And, and they're, they're helpful, but I've started to look at music more like time periods in places because like the Piedmont style blues is very different from the Texas stuff that was going on or from the Delta stuff and then the hill country stuff a little later and at the same time but the recordings of the later guys and women are just so different from the Delta stuff too so sure and then you got Chicago then you got Chicago and all that oh that's like way different and what fascinated me when I moved to Nashville and started playing some of this stuff in the context of other human beings and not just in my room was seeing the songs that I had learned in a very rigid genre where I was this is an old time song and it's called Sally Ann or like <laughs> you know Nine Pound Hammer is a great example when I learned Nine Pound Hammer from my guitar mentor I thought it was a Merle Travis song and no one else sang that song and I get to Nashville in the Bluegrass Jam they're doing this weird Nine Pound Hammer version and I'm like well okay I guess you know this stuff just travels and gets disseminated into the culture that it arrives at I guess and that's what's been so such a joyful experience about learning about folk music you know right well, you know, and I don't I don't disparage the record industry at all. That I mean yeah. they they did what they had to do to totally. 
Uh, but the musicians are the ones that cause the light bulbs to come on and the doors to open, uh, not only for listeners, but even more so for, you know, up and coming musicians who, you know, they're still you know, learning and finding their own way and their own creativity. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. You don't have to do it just exactly like this, right? No, not at all. Yeah. Well, 